It's a total pain when your application has issues because of unwanted dependencies on the class path. Thankfully, in Gradle, you can exclude dependencies. So in this video, you'll see three example problems and three different approaches you can take to solve them. Let's get right into it. In the first example, our Gradle project has a single dependency on the Guava utility library. Our application uses Guava's strings class to repeat a particular string three times, then print it out. Right now, everything executes fine. On reviewing our dependencies using the dependencies task, we see Guava has six transitive dependencies. These are dependencies that Gradle will add to the runtime class path because Guava relies on them in some way. But imagine that we're absolutely confident that given this one simple use case of Guava in our application, there's no need for these transitive dependencies. In that case, we decide to exclude some of them to clean up our class paths and make our deployable artifact smaller. So let's say we want to exclude find bugs. We do that in Gradle by adding an exclude rule specific to the Guava direct dependency. We add a closure to the dependency definition and call exclude, passing a group and module. And you can think of the module the same as the dependency name. Let's run the application again, and it's still working. Importantly though, our runtime class path no longer has the find bugs dependency. Imagine our application takes off and we decide to add the Google API client library to share this vital functionality further afield. But when we add the dependency and review our runtime class path, we once again see that the find bugs transitive dependency we excluded before has been pulled in again. But how so? Since Google API client depends on Guava, it also pulls in find bugs. The exclude we added before was only specific to our direct dependency on Guava. Fortunately, Gradle lets you fix this with configuration level excludes. Or in other words, excludes that work across a whole dependency configuration, such as implementation. This time, we retrieve the dependency configuration and add a closure with a similar exclude method. With this type of exclude, the specified dependency will never be included in the configuration. Our application still runs fine, and we can now see that find bugs is no longer added to our runtime class path. In the next scenario, we're writing a new application which needs to use the Spring Boot framework. So we add a dependency on Spring Boot Starter Web. Spring Boot by default uses the logback logging framework. Right now, our application code uses the logging implementation agnostic SLF4J framework. So when we run the application, we get logging output which actually uses logback in the background. But we decide we'd like to use log4j2 instead of logback, so in our blissful ignorance, we add Spring Boot Starter log4j2 to the dependencies. Now when we run our application though, we get errors complaining about multiple SLF4J bindings. That's because on our runtime class path, we have both logback and log4j2 bindings. So how to exclude logback? Well, we could use a configuration level exclude rule as you saw before to exclude Spring Boot Starter logging for all implementation dependencies. But Gradle gives us one more option of using what's called a module replacement rule. In simple terms, it's a way of telling Gradle that when it finds one dependency group and name, it should replace it with a completely different one. That's exactly what we want to do with Spring Boot Starter Logging. We tell Gradle that whenever it finds that module, it should replace it with Spring Boot Starter Log4j2. We can also provide a helpful reason for the replacement. And when we run our application again, we can now see that it's using Log4j2. Two nice things about the replacement rule compared to the exclude are that it's slightly more explicit in its definition and it removes the risk of accidentally excluding a dependency without providing a replacement. You now know how to use dependency level excludes, configuration level excludes and module replacement rules. This should set you up to solve many real world dependency issues in Gradle. If you have any other use cases for excluding dependencies you've come across, let me know in the comments down below. This is Tom, signing off.